The Guiding Light, presented by pure, digestible Crisco oil, a vegetable oil without a heavy, oily taste. Mrs. Padilla tells our interviewer that she's used the same salad oil for about five years. Now she's tasting salad made with an oil she's never tried. Listen. Well, it doesn't taste oily. I don't taste the oil at all. It's made with Crisco oil, a vegetable oil without that heavy, oily taste. Here's your oil. Here's Crisco oil. Any difference? The uh, Crisco oil is definitely lighter in color. How does Crisco oil taste? It tastes light. It tastes light. And your oil? That has more of an oily taste. How do you shop for things like oil, Mrs. Padilla? Habit? Mostly out of habit. Unless it's proven to me by word of mouth or by a test like this to uh, show me the difference. Then you think you'll try Crisco oil? I, I certainly will. It's, it's much lighter tasting. You try the much lighter oil. Crisco oil without that heavy, oily taste. Well, Miss Amy Hayes began her afternoon nap. Well, you certainly got her to sleep fast enough. <laughs> She usually gives me an argument first. Oh, she gave me a couple. But the Brahms lullaby always gets them. <laughs> Even when I hum it in my horrible voice. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Hayes, she's so adorable. Just make a note. You've got a babysitter whenever you need one. Be careful, because I'll take you up on that. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you came to lunch today. It's a shame Ed couldn't come along, too. Well, I extended your invitation. But you know, Ed, even when he has free time, he has a compulsion to stay around the hospital and learn things. <laughs> you like him quite a lot, don't you? Maybe a little too much. Well, why do you say that? Because I have a dangerous rival. Oh, is, is he interested in another girl? Oh, no, 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 there's no other girl. I think I'd almost prefer that. No, my dangerous rival is surgery. And that's the toughest competition in the world. As the daughter of a surgeon, I have to report that my own father's married to surgery. And it's a frighteningly successful marriage. But he also married your mother. Yes, and when I was born, she died. At that point, he married surgery. And they've lived happily together ever since. Are you saying that your father has neglected you? Oh, I don't think you could call it that. I don't know what I expected of father, really. Maybe just a little more contact. He's always been just a big, important person. Someone who came in from the outside world once in a while to say hello to me. And my nurses would say, There's your father, Leslie. <laughs> That's how I found out who he was. He does sound a little more remote than average. Well, he's no average man, my father. But average men have their virtues, too. I met Ed's father the other day. He struck me as the kind of person who made instant contact. He seemed like such a warm man. I'd like to really meet him sometime. And Mrs. Bauer, too. Maybe I can arrange that, if Ed doesn't first. <laughs> Sometime when you have a date, bring Ed over here and I'll, I'll invite his family, too. Oh, that sounds awfully nice. Well, when's your next date? Well, tonight. But it certainly wouldn't work out tonight. We have a date at my father's house and wild horses couldn't drag Ed away. <laughs> I think my father's the only reason that Ed dated me tonight. <laughs> Josephine, it's a bet. Okay, Miss Bowles, your cleanser against my new Comet. Mine will win, because it gets two tries at cleaning that tough food stain. Comet's so good, it only needs one try. New Extra Strength Comet gets out stains far better than any other leading cleanser, even yours. We'll see. Ready? Ready. Here's my cleanser's first try. We'll wet it and wait. Hmm, didn't clean much, sorry to say. 
I'll give it a second try. But Comet gets just one. Wet him, wait again. My cleanser still left some stain. After two tries. But Comet took it off with one try. Comet's the stain removing cleanser, the only one with super chlorinol. Disinfects better, too. <laughs> My cleanser lost by a mile. But I won, because I found out about Comet. New Extra Strength Comet gets out stains far better than any other leading cleanser. Just don't move. You know, I never realized it before. It's remarkable how much you look like your mother. I didn't know you were given to flattery. She was very beautiful. Well, you're not so hard to look at yourself, you know. She was even more beautiful than the portrait indicates. Now, how would you know that? You never saw her, did you? No, but my father's told me many times. Yes, but surely he even must have noticed the resemblance. I mean, even if I noticed it? Well, I think he did say once that I looked a little like her. I'm the poor man's version of my mother, I guess. Oh, can I fix you a drink while we're waiting for Father? All right. Just one. Where is he? <laughs> now, what a silly question. He was called for an emergency consultation. Something about the liver of a very important senator, I think. But in the meantime, you can endure just talking to me for a little while, can't you? Well, I can try. Good. Here, then. Thanks. You know, I never cease to be impressed by the kind of life your father leads. He's a great man among just ordinary men. But you don't realize that, do you? Yes, I'm afraid I do. You know, you're a funny kid, Leslie. You seem kind of hostile towards your father's talents. Maybe that's because I think my father's talent's a little hostile towards me. Now, what do you mean by that? Oh, nothing. No something. Let me see if I can explain, because this is a perfect example. We sit here talking. And what are we talking about? Me, you, the latest movie, the latest book? No. We're talking about my father's talent. Why not talk about your father? Why not talk about his talent for a change? Why? What do you see in him to talk about? An unappreciated father. Well, what's to be appreciated? Your father's an important man, even a, even a great man. My father's a miserable failure. Don't you think your standards need a little bit of examination, Dr. Bauer? What do you call success and what do you call failure? I call success, success, and failure, failure. My father's a success as a surgeon, yes. But he's a failure as a homemaker, Ed. He isn't even interested. Uh, yes, but my father's a failure as a homemaker, too. Or a success at a homebreaker, whichever you choose to call it. You're awfully hard on him. Your father regrets his mistake, and he, he's trying to recover from it. Why can't you see that? Because in the first place, that's not at all what he's doing. Do you want to know what he's doing? What? He's gone and barged into another big mistake. He started drinking again. Ah, oh, yes, he's had the good enough sense to stay off it for a few years. But now he's gone and picked up the bottle again.
mind washing up after birthdays. But I bet the floor will still be dull when I'm done. Heard about this? Top job. Procter & Gamble's Bright Green Ammonia Cleaner. Top job cleans floors like ammonia cleans glass. If you could see through her floor, you'd see what we mean. Clean like a window. Bright like a mirror. Quick as a wink. Like ammonia cleans glass. And I didn't even rinse. Mommy. Gee, the floor is so bright. I could see my dolly. How about that? Mommy got a birthday present, too. Top job, top job. So clean and bright and fast. Top job, top job. Cleans floors like ammonia cleans glass. Top job. Bill. Bill. Hey, bartender, give me another. Bill. Yeah, no, all right. Don't worry. It's the last one. Good. Listen to me. You're home. I ain't home. I told you I didn't even have a home, did I? I got a house. I got a big house. We got a wife in it, too. At least we got a marriage certificate. But a home I have not got. I've got not, oh, you, you, you. You have a saying. home. You have a home, who if you'd that, only who, see who it. Who is that saying that? It's me. Well, all right. Don't you Look, I don't bother I you. Am? I don't bother you. All right, you mind your business, I'll mind my business, all right? It is my business. All right. It's my business, I don't too. Know any reason why anybody want to butt into my business anyway, because I'm just a plain, ordinary 14 carat. Bum, that's what I am. You know, I, uh, you know, I, I left. I turned my back on a nice wife, you know, and I ran around with another woman. That's the kind of bum I am. Well, Bill. some bums do that. Bill. Now look, don't interrupt me. Don't interrupt me. Everything was fine. Everything was good. Until one fine day, my son. Oh, one lousy day. My son found out what I was doing. Ed found out about it. Yeah, you know his name? How do you know? Do you know my son? You yes, know I know your son. Oh. Oh, well, then you know what a great kid he is. He's going to be a big surgeon, that boy. You know that? Well, you know what he did when he found out? No, what did he do? He told me. Told me what a bum I was. A stupid bum. I loved that kid. I loved him. And now, and he, a joke, he loved me, you know? And now, boy, some father, some bum father, I'll tell you. Now I don't have a son. I don't have a son anymore. Guiding Light has been presented by Top Job, the brand new bright green ammonia cleaner that cleans floors like ammonia cleans glass. New Top Job. The Guiding Light, presented by today's Ivory Liquid with its Young Hands formula that helps hands look young again. hands look so old. Hi! Why, you're a Mary Miles, here to introduce today's ivory liquid. Ed's hands look young again, kind of like you had a maid, like me, to do your dishes. Better than mine? Only ivory liquid detergent has this special formula, young hands formula. 
creamy white. Ivory mild. Makes longer lasting suds, too. Proper hand care and ivory liquid will make your hands look young again. <gasps> Come on! We're playing charades! Your hands. Now my hands look young again. Well, come on. Ivory liquid helps your hands look young again. Young again. Well, that's quite a young lady you've got there. She's a beautiful, beautiful baby. And my professional eye tells me that she's a fine, healthy specimen, too. <laughs> yes. Oh, Paul, we, uh, we know how lucky we are. Well, for heaven's sakes, don't look so guilty about it. I couldn't be happier for you. Yes, I know you are, but I... I just can't help remembering all those months when Robin and I were looking forward to having our babies. So Robin and I will have another child of our own someday. And, God willing... A beautiful one, like yours. Yes, I, I'm sure you will. I hope you can convince Robin of that. Oh, I'm doing the best I can. May I say something, Paul? Yeah, sure. I've been meaning to talk to you about this before, but I... Well, you know that uh, Robin comes over here to see Amy a lot. You think it isn't good for her? Well... I think that the sight of Amy makes her brood about her loss even more. I love having yeah, her. No, you know, I know that. I know exactly what you mean, and I agree with you. Well, she's in this frame of mind. She should stay away from your baby as much as she can. You've uh, talked to her about this? Oh, yeah. How's she and Johnny getting along? Well, I think her attitude toward Johnny is all part of this... Deep depression of hers. She used to be so wonderful with him, you know. I think she will be again once she snaps out of this. How's Johnny reacting to it? Well, as I told him, she behaves differently towards me, too, right now. Why did... Did he say something to you? I wish he had. What do you mean? Well, Robin came over today, and... She insisted on babysitting for me while I went to see the obstetrician. And when I got back, Johnny was here. And? Well, usually he's so cheerful and friendly with me, and, and this time he... Oh, he's very quiet, almost brooding, and, and he left so abruptly. Well, did Robin give any explanation? No. After he left, I asked her what was wrong, and she said there was nothing wrong. <laughs> Hello, Peggy? Yes. Oh, is that you, John? Yeah, it's me. Gee, for a second you talked so low, I didn't recognize your voice. Uh, listen, Peggy, I wonder if I could see you for a while. Now? Well, it's, uh, it's getting sort of late, isn't it? Please, Peggy, I've got to see you. All right, why don't you come out to my house, then? No, no, I'd rather not. Listen, could you meet me at the drugstore near school? Is something the matter? I'll tell you when I see you. I'll be there as soon as I can. Thanks, Peggy. I'll be waiting. Grace, this cake's great. What's your recipe? Oh, it's too good to give away. Fine friend you are. Come on. No, it's a secret. Your cake recipe would save my meal. I'm stuck with leftovers tonight. Well, okay. My recipe is Duncan Hines. The mix? You're kidding. It's so moist. Moist as homemade. That's Duncan Hines. Look, the crumbs show how moist. Pick them up on your fork. Hey, they cling together. No dry cake does that. It is moist as homemade. That's why my recipe is Duncan Hines. Here. Get moist as homemade Duncan Hines cake mix. And now, another adventure in good eating from Duncan Hines. Try Duncan Hines wild blueberry muffin mix with loads of flavorly blueberries. Enough for 16 berries for each delicious muffin. Duncan Hines wild blueberry muffin mix. So I had a 
house call to make in the neighborhood. I dropped by, saw Jane oh. and her baby. Well, if he'd come a little early, he would have seen me. I babysat for Yeah, I know, I know, I know. She, she told me. Matter of fact, I could have found my whole family there, understand? Johnny was there, too. Yeah. Is he home, by the way? No, he isn't. He isn't? Why well, isn't he usually home by this time? Did he say where he went? No, I haven't got the slightest idea. He doesn't always uh, keep me in touch with his movements. You know that. Well, Jane said he left her apartment sort of abruptly. She was a little worried about him. Did he seem sort of... Uh, up I wouldn't know. It's peculiar. Paul, he's 18 years old, practically a man. Stop acting like an overprotective parent. Is that what I'm being? Well, maybe. Well, what did you think of Amy? Oh, well, I, I just saw her asleep this time, but I'd say they have good reason to be very proud parents. Aren't they lucky? Honey, we're going to be just as lucky someday. Yeah. You know, when I've seen a more beautiful baby than Amy, I think I might steal it from Jane. Think she'd mind? Yeah, I think rather she might mind a little bit. I suggest we wait patiently until another child of our own comes along someday. It's more legal. It's a lot nicer. Oh, I meant to tell you that Bruce called before you came in. Oh? Has he decided to go to New York? Yes, I think that's what he was calling about. He said he couldn't turn down a job that was uh, that good. No, oh, no. Must have been a tough decision for him, though. He and May have been here so long. Yes, I'm going to miss her. Well, we'll go visit them. Around the corner by jet. Maybe later this summer. Would you like that? Well, we'll see. Wonder what Papa Barr will do when they move. Do you think he'll go back to live with Bert and Bill? Well, I think Maida and Bruce are going to try to get him to go with them. Oh, no, no, no. He, he could never pull up stakes. Well, he has Trudy and Clyde there. Yeah, that's true. I think now they're just uh, taking him to New York. Do you realize what time it is? No, what about? Well, it's past dinner time. It's, all, it's almost seven. Well, I have dinner already. We can have supper whenever you like. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Johnny. Where is he? I don't know. It's not I like told him. you that. Stay away so long without telling us. He didn't say anything to you about where he was going. No. Paul, he's a big boy. He can take care of himself. Don't worry well, about honey, him. Honey, I'm sorry, but I am worried. It's 7 o'clock by now, and he hasn't sent us word. He's never done this before. I mean, never. day for Mrs. Gordon Wade of Cincinnati, Ohio. Her problem, greasy wash, dirty wash, muddy wash. When you've got wash this dirty, there's only one way to get it clean. The bomb, the dirt bomb. Introducing Salvo's dirt bomb. Here's a cup of the most powerful detergent. This much more cleaning power is concentrated in a dime's worth of new Salvo, the ultimate weapon in the war against dirt. I tried being nice to dirt with creamy liquids and fluffy powders, but now I use the dirt bomb and blast dirt to smithereens. Does that sound cruel? Well, what's dirt ever done for you? Thanks for coming. You know I'll come anytime. What is it, John? Are you in some kind of trouble? 
Yeah, I guess I am. Sit down, please. What is it? What's happened? It's the baby. What baby? Your aunt's? No, a dad's and Robin's. Johnny, I don't know what you're talking about. Robin told me what's wrong between us. What? Well, something worse than you could ever imagine. What? It's my fault she lost the baby. It's all my fault. But how? Why? Robin didn't fall in the kitchen like, like she always said. Like I always thought. She didn't? You remember the accident happened the afternoon of our, of our school show? Yeah, I remember. Well, that's when it happened. Wait, what happened? I don't understand. Robin went to clean up my room. Like always, it was in a mess. How she went to put some books on the shelf, was on a chair, and she fell. And that's how it really happened. Oh, no. That's how it happened. But Robin couldn't hold that against you. She couldn't. Well, she knows I didn't do it deliberately, but she also knows it was my sloppy bad habits that caused the accident. And she resents me for it. I can see why she does. I know she does, but in a way, it really was my fault. I directly caused the loss of her baby. Johnny, you didn't mean any real harm. Oh, what difference does that make? I caused real harm. I caused terrible harm. Oh, I wish I didn't have to go back there. Oh, John. I, I don't think I, I belong there anymore. Any, every time Robin looks at me, she's gonna, gonna be reminded of what happened. Look, does your father know about this? No, she hasn't told him. Well, then, you've got to tell him. No, oh, no. Oh, Johnny could probably help you. Don't you see? It's Dad's baby, too. He may blame me just as much as she does when he finds out. I don't believe that for a minute. Oh, I wish Granddad was still around. What good would that have done? I wouldn't be here now. I wouldn't have to face going home. You know you would always have had to face that eventually. But I don't know how to face it. Oh, I honestly just don't know what to do. The Guiding Light has been presented by new Salvo Power Tablets. For big, tough, dirty washes, ready, aim, Salvo. Guiding Light, presented by new Extra Strength Comet, the stain-removing cleanser, now also in the plastic decorator size and the plastic bathroom bundle. Two to one, Josephine. Yep. Comet can remove stains better with one try than your cleanser does with two tries. It's that good? New Extra Strength Comet gets out stains far better than any other leading cleanser. Even yours. Want to see a test on that food stain? I want to do it myself. Be my guest. Here's my cleanser's first try, right? Right. Wet it and wait. Stain's still there. Well, that's disappointing. I'll give mine a second try. Now, one try for Comet. Wet them. Wait again. There. Two tries with your cleanser, only one with Comet. Oh, still some stain. But Comet removed it. It's the stain-removing cleanser. Only one with Super Chlorinol. Disinfects better, too. That test makes me mad. Why? I've been buying the wrong cleanser. Don't get mad. Get Comet. New Extra Strength Comet gets out stains far better than any other leading cleanser. I don't know why you let Peggy go in the first place. Here it is dinner time, and we have to sit around waiting for her. I let her go because it was important to her. To run off to see that young jerk, Johnny Fletcher, just at dinner time? I think it's more important for her to stay home. 
Boy, I sure wouldn't have let her go if I'd been here. In the first place, Johnny Fletcher isn't a young jerk. He's a very nice boy. And he's Peggy's friend. All right. You shouldn't encourage her to be too friendly to him. I don't know how she could find anybody any nicer. He's a lovely boy. Well, what are you, a matchmaker? Boy, the boy is, is just too old for Peggy. He's, he's 18. He'll be graduating from high school in a couple of weeks. He is exactly one year older than Peggy. Besides, you're making a mountain out of a mole here. Oh. <laughs> he was upset about something, probably his exams, and he called Peggy and wanted to talk to her. As a friend, she should do that. Or don't you know what friendship means? It means that we have to sit around here waiting for her. I thought we were trying to work up some kind of a home. But first, you're always walking out on it, now Peggy. Oh, I haven't walked out on this home yet. The day I do, you'll know about it. You went somewhere again today, didn't you? Yes, I did. And I'll probably go someplace tomorrow, so you might just as well get used to it. Well, where did you go this time? I went to see George Hay. What about? He's looking for a part-time secretary. What's that got to do with you? I'm looking for some part-time work. Are you kidding? I'm making a fortune out of that restaurant of mine. <laughs> what are you trying to do, put me in a higher tax bracket so I'll lose money? Look, I get bored doing nothing every day. Don't you understand that? I'm used to working. You're not used to being a wife. That's your trouble. A wife sticks around the house and acts happy about it. Not this wife. Look, I want a job that gets me out among people, that gives me some contact with the outside world. Doing nothing but housework just bores me. This contact with the outside world you're looking for wouldn't have anything to do with Bill Bauer, would it? Now, what on earth makes you think that? Well, if you pick up a job in the downtown business district, that gives you an excuse to stay out of this house and be near him every day. I told you about his having a drinking problem now. Maybe you'd like to rescue your old hero and dry him out a little, while I'm supposed to think you're typing up letters for George Hayes. If you are trying to find a way to drive me out of this house, that's just the language that I'm can do trying it. to keep you in this house where you belong. Now, don't hand me any malarkey about loving office work. If you take a job, it'll be for love, all right, but not for work. Now, listen, Ben, I'm not gonna... Oh, honey, you're, you're back. Grace, this cake's great. What's your recipe? Oh, it's too good to give away. Fine friend you are. Come on. No, it's a secret. Your cake recipe would save my meal. I'm stuck with leftovers tonight. Well, okay. My recipe is Duncan Hines. The mix? You're kidding. It's so moist. Moist is homemade. That's Duncan Hines. Look, the crumbs show how moist. Pick them up on your fork. Hey, they cling together. No dry cake does that. It is moist as homemade. That's why my recipe is Duncan Hines. Here. Get moist as homemade Duncan Hines cake mix. And now, another adventure in good eating from Duncan Hines. Delicious Duncan Hines buttermilk pancakes. So light they're almost 50% higher than the leading mix. Duncan Hines buttermilk pancake mix. There's my favorite daughter. Hey, you had a nerve running out on your family just at dinner time? I had to go, Dad. Well, anyway, you're back. Shall we get rolling on the dinner, Maggie? I have a terrible headache. You excuse me, I'll lie down. I'm sorry, Mom. I'll fix Dad's dinner. You go ahead. Would you do that, honey? Mm -hmm. You go lie down now. Thank you. You and Mom were angry at each other when I came in. Yes. A little, maybe. Oh, don't let it throw you, honey. An occasional squabble of, is part of being a family. You wanted a family, didn't you? <laughs> oh, believe me, sweetheart. It was nothing important. It's all over now, isn't it? I hope so. Well, I'll go fix our dinner now. Oh, oh take it easy. I'm not hungry yet. Uh... 
Sit down a minute, honey. Let's have a little talk. All right. As a matter of fact, I'm not hungry either. <laughs> I'm uh, about to scold you a little, but before I start, I just want to remind you that I'm crazy about you. You know that, don't you? But what do you want to scold me about? Mom said it was all right that I go out. She didn't mind, and you weren't Well, home. honey, I, I know your mom understands, so do me a favor and uh, let me understand, too. Now, what is so important with Johnny Fletcher that takes you away from us at dinner time? Well, if you'd really like to know, I want to tell you. First, you have to promise to keep it a secret. It's Johnny's private problem. All right. We'll consider it a secret. Now, what is bothering your boyfriend? Well, Mrs. Fletcher told him something today. Something that made him feel it's his fault she lost her baby. What? Oh, it isn't. Not really, but she made him feel that it is. Well, I don't get it. Why would she do that? Unless it is his fault in some way. Well, in a way, he is a little responsible. You see, he used to keep his room in a mess all the time. He doesn't now, but he used to. And today, Mrs. Fletcher told him that she was trying to clean up his room when she fell and lost her baby. I see. And John said she feels a lot of resentment toward him because of that. And he feels just terrible about the whole thing. He didn't even want to go home today. Well, whether he does or not, it's Johnny's headache. I don't think you should be getting so mixed up in that boy's life like this. But he's my friend. He means a lot to me, don't you understand? Honey, what I understand is that you shouldn't be getting so mixed up in Johnny's affairs. But you have to care about your friends. And John is my very best friend. Yes, but uh, don't let this friendship business run away with you. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. You have a family now, right? And you have a nice home now, right? So let's not have Johnny Fletcher pull you out of it. Oh, Dad, please try to understand. It's because I'm so happy with you and Mom that I went. I love you being together, and I love our family. And John is having troubles with his family now. I know what he's missing. That's why I feel sorry for him, don't you see? Wash day for Mrs. Gordon Wade of Cincinnati, Ohio. Her problem, greasy wash, dirty wash, muddy wash. When you've got wash this dirty, there's only one way to get it clean. The bomb, the dirt bomb. Introducing Salvo's dirt bomb. Here's a cup of the most powerful detergent. This much more cleaning power is concentrated in a dime's worth of new Salvo, the ultimate weapon in the war against dirt. I tried being nice to dirt with creamy liquids and fluffy powders, but now I use the dirt bomb and blast dirt to smithereens. Does that sound cruel? Well, what's dirt ever done for you? that boy be? Whenever he's going to be late like this for any reason, he always phones. He's always very considerate. Paul, shouldn't I get the supper on now? Honey, are you sure you don't know where he went? You've asked me that three times already. I told you I don't know where Johnny was going. Yeah, I know. I just thought... I don't know what I thought. Paul. Mm. Look, let me put the dinner on the table, and then we can... Well... There you are at last. Where on earth have you been? I've been worried about you. Have you? I'm sorry. Well, sure I was worried. You never fail to come home for dinner before unless you call first to say why. Well, I'm sorry. I guess I should have called. What kept you? Were you in some kind of trouble? No, nothing happened. I just 
had to go to the library to look up a few things in some special books they've got there. I'm studying for my final exam tomorrow, you know. Oh, oh. Well, look, next time, please remember the phone, will you? I do have an interest in where you are, you know. Okay, I think we can sit down now, Robin. Uh, you haven't waited dinner for me, have you? Well, don't tell me you've already eaten. Well, no, I just... Well, just I don't feel like it right now. Uh, like I said, I've got to get to work on my studying. Besides, I don't think I'm very hungry. Could I go study then? Sure. Go ahead. Maybe you'll be hungry later. Yes, sir, maybe. Excuse me? Something's wrong with that boy. He's not acting like himself. Paul. I think you're being a little oversensitive. After all, Johnny, his mood's like all of us. And as he said, he has been studying for that exam. Do you think that's what it is? Yes, I do. Look, he's home now. The imaginary crisis is over. Let's forget it, can't we? Well, I can't forget the expression I saw on his face right now. I'm telling you, there's something wrong well, with a boy. You just saw the expression of a boy who's had a, a very long day. And he has to go on studying for his exams tonight. That's all. Maybe. But I don't think so. The Guiding Light has been presented by new Salvo Power Tablets. For big, tough, dirty washes, ready, aim, Salvo. Presented by Pure Digestible Crisco Oil, a vegetable oil without a heavy oily taste. Well, um, I think it's because my mother used it and, you know, I thought it went along and used what she used. Mrs. Elliot is telling about the salad oil she uses. Now she's tasting salad made with a different oil. Listen. Oh, no, it's very light. Because it's made with Crisco oil, a lighter vegetable oil without that heavy, oily taste. Here's your oil. Here's Crisco oil. How does Crisco oil taste? Well, um, it doesn't leave, have a greasy, you know, heavy taste. And your oil? It's much, much heavier and oilier. You say you use it because your mother did. And you never tried Crisco oil? Well, I should have, but um, I'm sure now I would switch to it since it is so light. <laughs> now I realize that, you know, this is better. You try the oil that's better, lighter, high in polyunsaturates, too. Crisco oil, an oil without that heavy, oily taste. I do without such a nice wife to rescue me. <laughs> Thanks for coming. What on earth happened? Oh, the car just gave up in the middle of the street. I was lucky this garage was near. Yeah, it was. Darling, we don't have to leave too soon, do we? I'm waiting for an estimate on these repairs. No, I guess oh, we can wait a few minutes. Yeah. Well, come on, sit down. Oh, did you have the woman across the hall babysit? No. No. One of your clients is staying with Amy. What, what do you mean? Who? Mrs. Scott. She happened to drop by for a visit, so she offered to meet the crisis by staying with Amy. Oh, it was very, very nice. Well, looks like I'll have to give her that job now, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> she said that she'd uh, 
come to see you about some part-time work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you'll be able to use her? Well, I think so. She, if she really wants to, you see, she's a very capable person. She's uh, obviously had secretarial experience before. If she really wants to. Yeah. Oh, she told me she does. Well, I think that Ben Scott is the hitch there. He thinks that a woman's place is in the home, and uh, he, she wants to uh, straighten that one out with him first. I wouldn't think Mr. Scott would have such an old-fashioned point of view. It doesn't seem to fit with his personality. <laughs> I don't know. Forcing her to marry him had an old-fashioned ring to it. I mean, uh, modern men don't, don't twist their wives' arms to get them down to the order. I didn't twist your arm, did I? <laughs> no, you certainly didn't. <laughs> then I was a very willing bride. Well, Mrs. Scott is a very unwilling housewife. Well, I know how she feels. I, if I didn't have Amy to take care of, I think I'd like to do some part-time nursing. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't like the sound of that. Does that make me old-fashioned? Well, fortunately, the question is academic, because we do have Amy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, George, can't you hurry up this garage? Yeah, I, I think they're going as fast as they can. Can't they phone you the estimate? Uh, Mrs. Scott has some shopping to do. I don't think we should keep her babysitting too long. You know about Bill and me? Yes, I know. And I'm sick and tired of pretending I don't know. I've known about you and Bill for a long, long time. All day on a plane, and she still looks terrific. I've got to know how she does it. Now what's she doing? Using ivory soap. Hi, girl. Oh, I'm Wendy Jordan. Weren't you on my flight? We just wanted a clue. To that great complexion. Well, wearing makeup all day is hard on skin. So I rest from makeup every chance I get. With ivory? Ivory helps skin that wears makeup stay young. Any soap removes makeup. Mm, but other soaps have ingredients that can stay on your face. Like deodorants. Heavy perfumes. Ivory's pure, mild. Let your skin rest from everything and stay young. Besides, more doctors recommend ivory. Great, only... Where can we get ivory here in Casablanca? Compliments of Wendy Jordan. Pure, mild ivory. Helps skin that wears makeup stay young. You're surprised that I know. Why? Because I sat back and endured your affair in silence. Because I never came to you and pleaded for you to leave my husband alone. Well, if you knew, why didn't you say something? Because I was a coward, I guess. Because I didn't want to make things worse, as if they could have been worse. How did you find out? One day, a long time ago, I went to the office to have lunch with my husband. And Carol told me he was at a restaurant down the street, so I went there, too. And there were the two of you together. And I saw the look in your face. A woman knows that look. You thought you had him then. I thought you did, too. Look, if... If Bill and I hurt you, I'm sorry, if but... If you hurt me. If you hurt me. You mean there's some doubt about that? I'm sorry. Please don't try to tell me that. You may be sorry about a great many things, but what you did to me in my home isn't one of them. If you're sorry about anything, it's that you didn't get Bill, that's all. Look, that is all in the past. Now, can't we... In your past, maybe. But it's still very much in my present. I'm living every day with what you did to my home. Every day I have to face this. The poison of that affair that you had with my husband is still in Bill's mind. He's drinking again. After years of not touching a drop. And you brought him to this. You drove him to this. 
Now, don't you think you're being just a little unfair? No, I don't. You dragged him into this affair and everything has come from that. Now, I often wondered what kind of a woman it is who would wreck a home and steal a man because she couldn't get a man in the decent way. Look, I didn't deliberately fall in love with Bill, and he didn't deliberately fall in love with me. You didn't exactly try to avoid it, did you? You found Bill at a time when he was a little unhappy at home and you took advantage of it, didn't you? You deliberately let yourself fall in love with him. A woman your age doesn't have to do that. You're not exactly a moonstruck young girl, you know. Look, I don't, I don't pretend to be. You saw by what the you same wanted token, to you deliberately never... set out to get it, and you didn't care how many people might get hurt. Now, look, that is not true. If I was that kind of a woman, I would have gotten what I wanted and not what I have, because I have nothing. Look, what, what do you expect of me? Bill and I ended this. It's over. Now, that is Bill in the past. There is no... Not you. You can't take any credit for this at all. None. You wanted my husband to marry you, didn't you? You pleaded with him to leave me, didn't you? Well, didn't you? Yes, Mrs. Bauer. I did. <laughs> wash day for Mrs. Gordon Wade of Cincinnati, Ohio. Her problem, greasy wash, dirty wash, muddy wash. When you've got wash this dirty, there's only one way to get it clean. The bomb, the dirt bomb. Introducing Salvo's dirt bomb. Here's a cup of the most powerful detergent. This much more cleaning power is concentrated in a dime's worth of new Salvo, the ultimate weapon in the war against dirt. I tried being nice to dirt with creamy liquids and fluffy powders, but now I use the dirt bomb and blast dirt to smithereens. Does that sound cruel? Well, what's dirt ever done for you? Well, at least you admit that. Well, of course I admit it. Why shouldn't I? Of course I wanted Bill to divorce you. Of course I wanted him to marry me. I love Bill deeply. I still do, as a matter of fact. All right, I was wrong. I know that now. But I loved him. Now you say it's wrong. You mean you didn't know it was wrong all along? No, I didn't. No, because I didn't realize how deeply Bill's heart was rooted in his home and with you. Could any decent man like Bill Bauer, whose family are his roots, could, could he not be completely bound up with them? But you thought you could destroy those roots. That's what you tried to do. You tugged and you tugged at him until you shattered him, till you shattered our home and you didn't give up until you found out you still couldn't get him. Does a husband who is happy at home fall in love with another woman? No, Mrs. Bauer, when you're looking for a place to put the blame, don't you think some of it lies at your feet? Yes. Yes, I blame myself, too. You don't have to worry about that. But my blame does not excuse yours. No, I'm not so sure. No, if, if I would have persuaded Bill to marry me, I think I could have made him happy. What kind of a wife have you been, Mrs. Bauer? What kind of a wife? Well, not sophisticated like you. Not smart like you. I have loved Bill nearly all my life. You don't know much about marriage, do you? What do you think it is? A smooth road, no bumps, no twists, no turns. It's ups and downs, and it's... It's pain and happiness all jumbled together, and it's mistakes. It is endless mistakes. I've made them. Bill's made them. But always up until now, we could... 
outlive our mistakes because we had something else in our marriage that bound us together. Loyalty. Forgiveness. Those are the things that kept us together. They're the things that kept us going. Not very well. By your own admission, not very well if Bill's drinking it. I know. But they may still keep us going. Despite everything you've done to our home, they may still keep us going. You came into our lives at a time of trouble. You caught Bill in a moment of trouble. But I still look for the day when he'll remember again all the things that we've meant to each other. I have faith in Bill's loyalty and in his forgiveness. And I know that Bill has faith in mine. Maybe I've done a lot of wrong things as a, as a wife. But just maybe I've done some right things, too. We'll see. I'm going now. I hope you won't tell Jane I've been here. I'll just come back another time. The Guiding Light has been presented by new Salvo Power Tablets for big, tough, dirty washes. Ready, aim, Salvo. Salvo.